No. Always these technical difficulties. It's All right. <laughs> I mean, that's live, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's see. It's recording now, perfect. Thank you, Richie. All right, um, yeah, so that's what happened. We'll hear feedback from last time. Uh, yeah, whatever you want to share today, put it on Slack, put it in the chat. Probably Jess will take notes as she's really good at it. Um, yeah, and we'll show you next time. Uh, what will happen with all this feedback and hopefully we'll be able to cater for uh, most of the things uh, that you mentioned. Um, yeah, some announcements. Um, we're hiring, so there is more and more work um, on our plate and we want to make Grafana uh, as good as possible, uh, but there's only six of us at this point, so if any of you knows a designer who would love to join Grafana, let them know. Um, link to this presentation will be in the doc. Um, this role is also available on our website. A um, couple of words of the projects that are coming our way um, and research we will be running. So if you have anything you would like to share about your onboarding experience or how it is or was starting to use Grafana, we would love to hear you. If you have any experience with Grafana Cloud, please let us know. Um, we would love to have a chat about this. Um, we're also looking into some improvements in the search and navigation area and logs. So uh, if any of this resonates with you, if uh, you have any comments on any of those topics, please let us know and reach us at uh, uxofgrafana.com. Um, yeah. We also, together with Grafana 7.0, launched uh, our storybook and we have uh, a public Grafana UI library and I will hand over to Tobias. All right, let's see if uh, I can do this. Share screen maybe. Uh, yeah. Oh, would you look at that? Perfect. Yeah, so uh, my name is Tobias Garhead. Um, I'm a front-end uh, software engineer here at Grafana. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna talk a little bit about kind of how we have worked with implementing uh, our design system and with our library Grafana UI. Uh, so Grafana has been growing, growing kind of organically uh, over the past couple of years and uh, the problem with that is that it kind of gets a little bit out of, out of hand. Uh, so you have like the design is very inconsistent across the product. And uh, that is something we want to kind of change with, uh, with our, like our design system. Um, so it's both for like making uh, Grafana a more consistent product, but also for plugin developers who like want to, be they want their plugin to look like a part of Grafana basically. Um, so we're working with this and uh, we're also providing guidelines on like how to use uh, these elements and where to use them and when not to use them, uh, which is kind of good to have. So we want to make this kind of publicly available. So especially for, for um, plugin developers and also for for internal people who who want to e easily access it so we have um, we have kind of two links uh, <laughs> you you can go to developers.grafana.com ui and you will be redirected to like the latest release uh, of grafana ui uh, or if you're really like on the edge here you can go to ui slash canary and uh, you would receive the freshest of the freshest uh, straight out of the press. <laughs> um, and we have, uh, we have some written documentation for these components. Uh, some we don't, uh, <laughs> but we're getting there. We're working on it. Uh, so I thought I'd show you around a little bit. Um, so, 
let's see where where did I put it? No. Oh, by the way, here's the temperature in my apartment. <laughs> really hot. Uh, oh my God, this is in the way. Developers.grafana.com. And here you can kind of see our nice uh, structure if this will load. There we go. Uh, so I have a short introduction on a little bit how to use Storybook. Um, quite interesting. I, I thought, thought I guide you through it a little bit. So on the left, we have like all these components we use somewhere in Grafana. And let's have a look at a button here maybe. So we have a canvas tab, which basically is just the component in itself, uh, where we can kind of interact with it and play around with it. And uh, here to the right, you have what we call knobs, uh, which is basically a way to like control what kind of properties you want you want for the component. So yeah, we maybe want a pen icon. Yeah, we can get it. Cool. We can change brines here. Oh. So you can play around with it a little bit. And to the right here, we have the story, so to speak, uh, which is basically uh, like, it shows you how it is implemented. So if you, if you wanna use it, this is how you do it. And uh, then we also have the docs tab up to the left. And uh, some components don't have this because we haven't gotten around to, to writing them yet, but this is basically kind of contains a little bit of code examples, uh, like how to use it and when to use it and where to use it. And uh, at the bottom here, we have kind of a props table for, for the component to see basically what you can use. And these should be reflected in, in the canvas here, but we, we don't have it for, for all components yet, uh, so we're working on it. So that's a little bit about how, how Storybook works. Uh, you can definitely go to a link here and check it out. Uh, click around a bit. And why won't my thing work? There we go. So, where, where are we currently then? Um, we're kind of establishing a process around, around this design system uh, for how to add and remove components uh, in kind of a, a good manner. And uh, if you click around Storybook, um, you can kind of see that there are some errors here and there, and uh, there is some missing information. And uh, there are quite a few components that need uh, documentation. So where, where does the community come in <laughs> into this? Uh, so basically, if you find an error or some missing documentation, uh, definitely to tell us. Like, you can use Slack or GitHub or maybe just say it here. And if this is something you, you need, we, we will definitely, like, we'll fix it. No problem. Um, and kind of interestingly, do you miss a component in our design system? Is there something that you think like, hey, maybe someone else would like this too? Like, definitely don't hesitate to, to contact us and uh, we'll, we'll get around to it. So yeah, I guess, uh, that's kind of a short introduction to, to Storybook and kind of the work we've done around the design system and uh, yeah, a little bit about how we implemented it. So definitely check out Storybook and uh, just tell, tell us how you feel about it. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thank you, Tobias. Uh, can you put a link to the presentation into our doc? Uh, to the presentation? Yeah. Or, or to With the story? Uh, both to the presentation oh, that you okay. gave. Yeah, okay. That would be really cool. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you. So, did anyone have a chance to take a look at our storybook? 
or do you have any like comments on what Tobias showed? Okay, I guess it's too fresh. You have comments. Yeah, uh, yeah. Do, but, do we have any plugin developers here? Uh, yeah. I mean, we will still, uh, if you have any comments later on, and if you want to first play with our storybook, then um, there's a bunch of stuff on Twitter about this. You can reach also Tobias, you can roll the UX community. Um, yeah, we're happy to have a discussion. Also, if you want to contribute, then uh, let us know. All right, so, Moving on to some 7.0 features. Uh, the, the last time we discussed panel edit at length uh, together with some mm, other features, but did any of you here had a chance to uh, play with Rafana 7.0 or take a look, maybe take a closer look at uh, what changed? Okay, I think this is enough, so maybe I will just show a quick demo of maybe some highlight features that are there. So let me share again. Well, sorry for the noise in the background. Right. Okay, can you see Grafana on my screen? Yes. Okay. So one of the first things I'd like to show you is something that I uh, just worked on, um, and that is a query history. So whenever you um, go to explore now, you have query history available, which is your own query history. If you click on it, you get a drawer uh, with a week um, of queries that you have used. I have to close this a bit. This a bit. Um, yeah, you can search by a data source, or rather filter in this case. Um, you can switch to a data source and run a query if you want. Um, you can choose some, you can mark some queries as your favorite ones and have them at hand always. You can put some comments. Those comments are visible only for you. Um, also within the settings, um, you can set the time span so you can store your queries from anything from uh, two days to two weeks. Um, you can have default tab, uh, the start tab can be your default one. Um, and you can, sh for instance, show queries that are um, only related to the data source that you have currently um, chosen. So did any of you had a chance to use query history? Or if not, do you have um, any comments or feedback or maybe questions? Um, can you see other people's query history or like all related to a data source? Yeah, we get this question <laughs> from time to time currently. Uh, this is only for, um, for you, so it's locally stored. Um, so if I may ask, and it's perfectly uh, fine if you don't want to disclose this, uh, would it, uh, in what use case? Would it be useful for you to have it shared with your team, for instance? Um, one way I'm thinking of, if there was someone that ran um, too large of a database on a Postgres and it took down our like dev or test instance one time. And if we were able to go back and see what kind of queries that they're running, um, we could critique and possibly help them um, not take our instance down. 
that that was like, one way I was thinking of it, but um, educational tool. Yeah, exactly. Not that it would be, um, and and just being able to share it with someone else. I know you could share your screen, but if they were able to look through what kind of queries you were running, I think it could help them um, learn and be able to see how other people are running queries and maybe work towards a better process. Yeah, yeah it's a very interesting point because we have done some research around this feature and almost everyone, especially the not so advanced users that we interviewed, said that they would love to look at other people's queries. So they would like a team feature to mm -hmm. see how others do it and learn from that. But most of them were a little bit ashamed of having everyone see their queries because they were all a bit like, yeah, but my queries are so bad and I make so many mistakes and uh, a lot of them fail and then everyone can see how many failed queries I enter. So um, what do you think about this sort of moral dilemma of feeding yeah. you not skilled enough? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I hear you on that because like that's that's something like, you know, you have to learn that failure is not always a bad thing. Um, I, I personally think I would appreciate being able to see when someone else's query fail, maybe just as like an admin perspective of like, I can look and help support them. Um, but I, I definitely get like, there is you, there's associated shame with like maybe taking something down or taking a dashboard down, but I think just from a perspective of insights, it would it would be useful to be able to look and see, um, and maybe that's like a feature where you could toggle it on so other people can see your queries and then toggle it off so it's just private. You know what I mean? Or be able yeah. to choose. I think that would be really nice. Um, because then it, it kind of gives you the ability to be anonymous and not show off what you got going on. I don't know. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. And another suggestion that we have heard is that it might be useful to have sort of an export import functionality. So that, for mm -hmm. example, you could export some start queries and pre-populate a new user's history with those by importing them again. So like that could also be a solution to this Sort of dilemma thing that oh if i want to look uh, at someone else's history they can share it with me in that way and then i will only see a limited area of their history because they exported it for me or something like that yeah it kind of makes me think of like github repos where you can make it private or public or shared hmm. um mm -hmm. just in the sense of like there is there is a way to have private code um, but hmm. if it is, it, I mean, we're all sharing an instance, you know, like if you're, yeah. like if you accidentally take it down, why wouldn't you want to learn how to improve? I think that's part of the nature of technology. I don't know. Yeah, I totally agree to that. And then at least in my research, most people said that, yeah, if they have to decide on a case by case basis, whether it's supposed to be private or not, they will probably forget to do it the right way. So there's always a, a chance of that being more jarring than helpful because then, oh no, we didn't share that part that we wanted to be public and now it's private instead or vice versa, so yeah. Yeah, is it a catch all or is it like every query you have to show too? Like, I don't know. It, yeah, exactly. I guess, I guess I would take some thinking around it and like, what Absolutely. if I only wanted to show off one query, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I think so thank you for very, your thoughts on that matter. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I think it's super interesting how a lot of users um, talk about educating people, especially uh, every time we show query history. Like we had several instances when we discussed how to help someone educate their own team, and the like, query history was kind of an immediate answer, like having shared queries or predefined queries via query history. Yeah, it's really cool. I think we get more and more voices and it's becoming more and more clear in which direction this feature should evolve. Um, yeah, so thank you. That's super helpful. Does anyone else have any thoughts or comments? All righty. So let's see another 7.0 feature. And now I broke something. 
Okay, so um, we've created a inspect drawer. So uh, you can access it either from um, the dashboard by clicking I or using this menu over here. Or you can just go to edit mode and use link in the edit mode. So what you get uh, is um, all the data, you can, you can get all the stats about total request time, processing time, number of queries that are uh, run and total number of rows that you got. Uh, you get the JSON blob and uh, you can get info on row request and response, but uh, because some queries can be uh, very expensive, we don't run them by default. So if you uh, use this tab, you have to click refresh to actually get the information. Um, also, um, you can download a CSV file. Um, yeah, and that pretty much sums up the inspect drawer. Did any of you? I mean, it's been around for a bit longer. It wasn't released with 7.0. It was released a bit earlier. So um, did any of you had, any, uh, had a chance to, uh, to use it at any occasion? Does any of you maybe see this as something that can bring any value or it doesn't really matter that much for the workflows that you have or the use cases that you work with. Okay. Yes. That's perfectly fine. And we ended up in the, I think Abel, you were here for the last call to probably seen it. Um, the new panel edit, which uh, now has a sidebar in which we have all the settings for uh, basically manipulating visualization. Um, you can set up anything related to the way uh, data is rendered in the sidebar and then do all the things related to a query in the um, bottom pane. Um, does anyone here have any comments on the new panel edit or did you get a chance to actually use it? there may be something that with the new panel edit or what you see right now on the screen that pops some questions for you or maybe it's confusing in any way. I mean, what I think is very interesting with the new panel edit that compared to what we had until 6.7, this looks loaded with functionality and maybe in that sense, it, it can seem almost a bit overwhelming at first, but at the same time, it's so much more transparent, all the things that you can do in this panel edit. So I think like what once you like swallow and breathe and are like, okay, now I, I, I'm reading everything that's here and notice, oh, there's so much stuff to do here. Then I think this is really helpful, at least to me, like I, I'm not the most technical Grafana user, I still, have to play around a lot to see what everything does. And I feel like seeing all the things that I can do and having more tooltips that are directly visible and stuff, that's super helpful to me. So, something that I notice is kind of, you, you don't, uh, like before I, I always had kind of a, a need to look for things. <laughs> uh, like, oh, where, where's this stored? And that, now it's like, uh, the visualization settings, like it's under 
like panel, field, and overrides tabs. And if you just click through those three, you will probably see what you're looking for kind of immediately. Yeah. Uh, so that's one of the things I, I really enjoy about it. I think one of the things that is coming hopefully very soon is an additional feature that will uh, make it even easier for panel for you to browse uh, options in panel edit is uh, a filtering option uh, for the sidebar. So you will be able to basically type in uh, any uh, configuration field you're interested in and it will just show you those options immediately. So uh, that together with collapse and expand all uh, which is the feedback we got last time should even more improve the discoverability and the navigation through the whole new panel edit. Oh and the change indicator right? Oh yeah and the change indicator. Uh, so one of the things that we found out during research was that um, a lot of our users would love to, not necessarily when the panel is created from scratch, but uh, when uh, it's being edited after let's say a couple of months or half a year and especially by someone who didn't create the panel in the first place. So uh, what we'll add here is a, a change indicator, which will show you which of those options um, were changed uh, meaning which of those sections were manipulated by someone to create this visualization. Yeah, and change here means it's not the default setting anymore. Yeah. So you will see it both on the level of a section, but also, uh, that's the one example, but also on the level of a, of a, of a single um, option available here. Yeah, um, any thoughts? Ranton, you've been very quiet. So I don't know if you're just listening. Or maybe you have some thoughts you would like to share. <sighs> oh, perfect. If you're new to Grafana, I would love to um, have a chat with you. Uh, later on about your experience with onboarding as this is something that we really want to improve. All right. Um, so this, there's not uh, that much that I would like to share today. Is there anything you would like to discuss? Uh, regarding uh, new features uh, that we have here and how it is to use it uh, with any feedback. For example, as Diana mentioned, in the future we want to tackle search and navigation. And that's usually a topic that people have a lot of opinions about. So if that's something where you have any thoughts off the top of your head, please now is a good time to mention them, or in our Slack, of course. Okay, so let me show you what we will be discussing next time. So, um, yeah, I'm too quick with quitting. Uh, yeah, so next month will be all about logs. So uh, Jess will probably run uh, this community call and we would love to show you um, what, we, what we're working on when it comes to logs. Uh, probably uh, Andre will also show you tracing that we have just integrated into Grafana and we would love to um, get your thoughts on that. Um, is there something, and that is only our suggestion, so if there's anything um, Ranton or Adele you feel like maybe is worth tackling next time, uh, just let us know, or maybe you already have an idea that would be nice to discuss next time. Um, I've had some issues with the transform 
um, feature. And I mean, that's really new to me. Uh, I don't know if everyone's there or if I'm just doing something wrong, but every time I've tried to like run queries on there and do like a reduce or something, it gives me unexpected error. And uh, it could be a complete user error and I'm just goofing up, but I think that would be really valuable to me to have a better insight into how that works and like ideal, ideal ways to utilize it, like maybe best use case scenarios. Um, mm -hmm. Just, I mean, I, I think I understand the element of like what it is, but I don't think I am using it properly or even yeah. like docs to read through, that would be beneficial. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's us, not you. Um, we get the comment about transformations quite a lot. Uh, it was just introduced um, and we will be definitely working on making it uh, even better. Um, I will talk to Dominic, he was presenting transformations last time and I will also um, pass this information to the rest of the team. Um, there is probably, I don't want to, oh, hello, Daniel. We were just discussing transformations. He just wants to listen. <laughs> From... <laughs> yeah, everyone wants to listen. <laughs> um, hey, Daniel, I will just mention transformations. Oh, hello. Um, so I was just in yeah. another meeting about transformations. So. Yes. <laughs> That's what I was saying. That we get, <laughs> yeah, that we got a lot, uh, that we get a lot of comments on that. Um, and Adele would love to maybe uh, have some uh, bigger intro to transformations and some better documentation that I think uh, something we can work on. Um, but are you aware of where we at currently with transformations? Uh, where we're at. Um, uh, I suppose the, the bad thing about it is that it's broken on 7.0.1 uh, at the moment. Um, we did a patch release and broke them. Um, and uh, yeah, it's going to be another few days before we get out the next patch release. So uh, they only work on 7.0.0 at the moment or on latest master. Um, uh, otherwise, I know it's, it's um, sort of a, a beta, beta phase, I would say. So we don't quite support everything yet that we used to for like the old table uh, styles. Um, but they are still, I think, uh, already very useful depending on what you want to do. Um, so like a, a good example, so I'm working on a, a data source for uh, our forum. Um, and it has a very, very limited API. So you can't like get out that, you can just get out like a number per day and that's it. And then with transformations, for example, I could do things and uh, you know, get the sum over 30 days and, and, and things like that, which you could not do with query language. Um, so if you, if, you're, if you have like a, a very limited data source and you can already backfill it quite a lot with, with uh, transformations. Um, and there's lots of more features coming in, uh, in the uh, upcoming releases. So um, we are basically adding more and more transforms. So it's gonna get more full featured over the next uh, two or three releases. Um, and it also enables a whole bunch of new visualizations, which we also will be working on. Um, so it's basically a, a move away from just being pure time series data to also allowing sort of non-time series data. I'm not sure if that's what you were looking for. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, I just wanted like best use case scenarios, but I think we just updated to 7.1 or 7.0.1 um, yesterday. So if it's not even a feature we can use at the moment, um, I'll just stay tuned. Yeah, hopefully in the um, seven or zero stop coming any any day now. So yeah, then it'll work again. Um, Good luck. Yeah. Well, uh, I I think that's great feedback about the best use case scenarios. That's definitely something that we can put on our to do list to add to the documentation. But I think also, um, Adel, are you able to share or? What's your use case for those transformations? Um, so, I mean, that's what I was more trying to understand, like, 
what the like I have data sources that I'm using and I like one use case I can think of is I'm actually pulling in like cloud era manager um Hadoop uh clustering other directories and I wanted to reduce by directory type um I have written out my queries already and then like kind of did them by variable but I think that the transform feature would be really great for um that it would make it simpler because uh, I wouldn't have to pull those queries as much, but um, I'm not sure if that's the best use case scenario. I don't know what the best use case scenario is for everything because I'm so new to the transform and that was more where I was coming from. Um, yeah, what, did that uh, answer your question? I'm not sure I quite quite got it. Um, how, how, was you, how are you hoping to reduce uh, the, it, there was like, so I, I, my column is um, directory, uh, like it's called directory name, and I would like to be able to just search. I don't know if it is the reduce or what feature it was. I really haven't played with it that much because every time I've tried it actually, um, it, it just said unexpected error. Yeah. Um, so I, I would like to be able to have it sorted by directory name. Um, does that make sense? Is that a uh, proper use case of it? See, I don't even know. It, it, it is, <laughs> uh, but it, it's still like in beta. So that, that is not there yet. So yes, I think we will be adding things like uh, sort and limit. Yeah. So uh, I'm not sure when that will be exactly, uh, 701 or 702, where you'll be able to say sort by um, uh, a column and then say, you know, give me the top five. Okay, yeah, no, that's exactly um, what I'm trying to do. So, so not, not I mean, I, I think I said reduce, but reduce yeah. is just one of the types of transform, not, I, I wanted to do a transform and then one of the subgroups. Yeah. So. Um, cool. Yeah, so uh, uh, not, not quite yet. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately. Uh, I'm really sorry about the, the, um, the bug. We um, uh, will try not to let that happen again. All good. I mean, it's a new feature and that happens. Thank you. You're welcome. Diana, you're muted in case you're talking to us. Yeah, apparently I was talking to myself, but um, yeah, so we're moving slowly toward the, the end of this call. So does anyone else? Or maybe you, Adele, have yet another topic uh, you'd like to discuss. Okay, I'll take this as a no. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Um, next month, um, like I mentioned, we'll discuss all stuff logs related. Um, yeah, once again, thank you for joining us and having uh, giving us a really great feedback. Um, yeah, and we'll keep you posted. In the meantime, if there's anything uh, pressing, please post on Grafana Fails or reach, out, reach us at ux at grafana.com. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a great Bye. rest of your day. Thank you. Bye. 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 Mm-hmm.